Yeah. Evening, sit down please. Yeah. As we, we have enough people here now, um, we will call the meeting order at 6.04 on Wednesday, October 21st. Um, since I don't have a name tag or a polo yet, I will introduce myself. My name is Taylor. I am serving as the Executive Vice President, and this is my very first meeting. We will start with roll call. President Ashley Parano. Present. Acting Executive Vice President, that's me. We will present. Vice President of Camp External Affairs. Here. Vice President of External Affairs. Here. Vice President of Finance. He's excused so late. Marketing and Promotions Director. Personnel Director. Please let me know if she's uh, notified in advance that she will not go to this meeting. Outreach Director. Uh, President Pro uh, Pro Tem, Corey Wills. Present. Chess Center, Alan Mohammed. Here. Chess Center, Casey Gilmore. Present. Chess Center, Dalshaw Mosin. Chess Center, Des Jackson. Present. Chess Center, Giselle. Present. Chess Center, Joshua Lopez. You'll be arriving late. Thank you. Uh, Chess Senator Christina David. Yeah, present. Thank you. Chess Senator Nick Correa. Present. Chess Senator Verna Chan. Present. Senator Catherine Taylor. Uh, he's excused, she told me. Senator Melissa Vargas. Present. Senator Nevin Perez. Present. Senator Winyu Chow. Present. And uh, Senator Aaron Sunder will be late. Senator Ryan Trimento. Present. As we have a majority, we have a quorum. And moving on to approval of the agenda. Uh, so if there are any motions to amend the agenda, mm -hmm. President Hirana. Uh, my motion to move the agenda, uh, to amend the agenda, to have public forum moved from the end of the meeting to um, after the execution. Mm -hmm. To clarify, please mention. Yeah. Uh, from the end of the meeting to um, right after the meeting, we're going to receive the motion. The motion on the table is to move executive session, I believe, to the next year. To after the exhibition. To after the exhibition. So right after item E. Is there a second to this motion? There's a second from Senator Douglas Jackson. Is there any discussion on this motion? Quite a clarification. Yes. So it's executive session moved after exhibition before. Yeah. Right. Yes. Perfect. There. Yes, again. Um, Please. Uh, to clarify, we have um, seven people coming to discuss, um, and they have families, and so they're like not being able to talk to someone else to speak. Um, some of them are here already, and uh, it's up to them to come here. Um, keep in mind that it was a Okay. Um, and just also want to give respect both the gallery side. I suppose like since we do have public forum, we'll be able to hear from students who also have taken time out of the day to come and send It's also maybe helping to further clarify how much time you were requesting for this executive session because I also believe that uh, I requested an additional one and I believe that the two are related. So it may take longer than I think you might uh, anticipate it to be. Um, my original assumption was that it would take about 30 minutes. Vice uh, President, how long do you think we're going to take? Possibly around that time could be longer depending on discussion, and that's actually why I want to keep in mind that the public forum aspect. Okay, so um, to clarify the motion one more time, the motion is table to move the second session to before execution reports. So after execution reports, and this would mean that we would leave the horseshoe and hold the second session in the conference room. Um, I believe no one from here. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, um, our VP of Finance also wanted to give a report um, for the English session, so I'm not sure where that is for the um, calendar. But in terms of the moving executive uh, session before the public forum, I thought you should be after the public forum. Since you're the motion, would you like to Yeah, I'll make my motion to amend the agenda to have the executive session before the public forum. Um, instead of 
making a motion, can you just change the original motion? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Should we drop the original? Okay, so the original motion of the new motion is to um, hold the executive session after after ex officio. After public oh, vote. <laughs> yes. Um, is there a second to this change of motion? Seconded by the Senator Wu Chow. Unless there are any discussion to make, you will move this to a vote. Seeing no, yes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I thought you were. Seeing uh, no discussion or objections, move this to a vote. All in favor of this motion? All opposed? Any abstain? I'm staying the vote. So the motion, so it's 12, uh, the vote is 1201, the motion passes. So please move the agenda's executive session to after public forum. None, the agenda will be uh, approved as presented or as changed. Moving on to um, approval of said meeting minutes. Uh, as usual, we're passing on the meeting minutes. If there are any changes, please note them and we will adopt it as suggested. Uh, moving on to ex officio reports. Does anyone from here with an ex officio of this board who would like to talk? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so I'm here from the LGBT Center, the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, <coughs> Transgender Research Center. Um, and we have some general like notifications, just like our regular programming, Tuesday talks. Every Tuesday, we invite you all from 5 to 6 to come in and join a conversation. The upcoming topics are like queer relationships and cute talk talk, which is pretty cool to color talk. And then we have our, our Monday mentor, our, our online mentor program, which is from 7 to 9. You just kind of log on voice whatever you want, ask questions. Um, we are asking like for help, if, like word of mouth or whatever it needs to share it can. We have an organization called Names and Neighbors, and it's a tie between the LGBT Center and the, N and the Middle Eastern Student Center. It's called Names and Neighbors, and it's for folks who uh, identify under the free spectrum but are um, have relations to the to North Africa, the Middle East, South East, and South Asia. And we're trying to get it started back up again, and like whoever like has like a general interest in that, or has folks that you think would be interested in that too. Nancy from the LGBT Center or Tina from NUC. And then a general in, a general invitation to our event that's coming up next Thursday. It's um, the coming out dance and it's gonna be at the barn and it's just a general fun thing to do if you don't have to do Thursday night. It's gonna be free food and a DJ. Thank you. Uh, would you mind writing down your name and the you wrote on the paper for the purpose of minutes? Okay. Uh, is that one for you? Please, thank you. Are there any um, questions or comments from the members of the horseshoe? Open the speakers list. <coughs> Seeing none, um, any other ex official members would like to talk? Um, Andres Medrano from Rafa Assembly, uh, CSP. Just uh, another invitation that to remind you guys that, that, um, that, you know, that Dia de los Muertos will be next Wednesday. And the event will be from 11.30 to 2 at the Bell Tower. There will be live music and um, food vendors. So um, so please come by and support. Um, all the food vendors will be selling. I know you all will be selling tacos. Mesh um, will be selling bacon wrapped hot dogs. And I'm not sure what else, who else is going to be selling stuff. But um, yeah, um, there will be altares you know, to honor those who have passed. So, um, There'll be there'll be a community one as well. If if any of you want to participate and bring something that remembers you of, of sort of a loved one that passed away. Um, also, next week, um, continuing the Adelante Success Series uh, workshops that CSP is uh, 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 sponsoring. Um, there'll be a workshop on advising, so information about the academic calendar. Um, how to construct to, to your 
horse plants. Um, there's always food there. This last week there was uh, burritos, so, and that's from um, from 12 to 1, and that one will be held in Sprout 2 to uh, 2,225. Um, also, uh, the planning committee meetings have already started for um, events like the Chicano Latino Youth Conference, the Semana de la Mujer, and Raza, Raza Grant. Uh, Chicano Latino Youth Conference meets on um, Monday from 2 to 3, and Semana de la Mujer, Wednesdays from 4 to 5, Raza Grad, Fridays from 2 to 3, and all meetings are held in the CSP conference room. Thank you. <laughs> uh, are there any questions or comments from the host here? <coughs> Seeing none, um, again, please write down your name, organization, and piece of paper for the purpose of the minutes. Any other exhibition members wishing to speak at this time? So, good evening, everyone. Sorry for my voice. Uh, my name is Chelsea. I'm the RHA Executive President and the Ex Officio. So, just a quick update on RHA. This past Monday, we had our Quad Social. And what that is is a friendly competition between all four RHA communities. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a great way for everyone to socialize and interact with one another. Um, this Friday, Petland Hills RHA has a program called the Lion Me Barricade. It's a social justice and speed funding program from 3.30 to 6 p.m. by Lot 15. Um, and next Tuesday, October 27, Glenmore RHA, um, in conjunction with some of the Glenmore RAs, have a program called Craftmore. And here they'll be showing um, different DIY projects, such as um, DIY potpourri, follies, mod podge, um, string curtain, like paint a pumpkin, and how to properly mount and hang decor in the Glenmore apartments. Um, we'll also be preparing to go to our conference November 13 to 15 called PACUR. I've talked about it um, a couple times, but that stands for Pacific Affiliate Colleges and University Residence Halls. And to put that into a little bit of context for you all, um, similar to how um, ACCR goes to the UCSA conference, we go to PACUR, but it's more region-wide, not just California. And um, later on, we'll be going to NUCUR which is a national association, and that's similar to USSA, to put that a little bit into context for you all. Um, we're also gonna be updating our RHA logo. The residents have already voted, and we have the, um, the set logo that we have, and we're gonna go ahead and get it approved from the higher ups before we present it to the community. That's it. Thank you. Any comments, questions from members of the Hoshu? Okay. Any other one who is an ex officio who would like to speak at this time? Hello, everybody. My name is Nick. I am a student coordinator at Asian Pacific Student Programs of the ex officio. Um, next Monday, APSP will be co hosting a screening of the Delano Mano. Um, it tells the story of Larry Itliong, who is one of the farm labor organizers that instigated the Delano Grape Strike. Um, although the movement was known for Cesar Chavez's leadership and is considered a Chicano movement, Filipinos too played a pivotal role um, in this movement. Um, in addition to APSP, the um, screening is co-hosted by Chicano Student Programs, Mecha, Katsu Punan Filipino Student Organization, Filipinos in Health Sciences, and Anakban in Inland Empire. Um, the event's going to be on Monday, October 26th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at Hub 367. Um, it's open to anybody. Um, I do have some flyers. I don't know if it's enough, but um, I'm going to pass it around. <coughs> um, um, also, tomorrow we will be having our Mind and Soul Roundtable. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Mind and Soul is a um, Roundtable exclusively for API women, where pregnant issues will be addressed and discussed. Uh, Mind and Soul provides a safe and confidential space where API women can share and express their stories and struggles with fellow peers. Um, and that's going to be at the APSP office at CASA 244 from 1 to 2 p.m. And also next Wednesday is our <coughs> open roundtable um, in which um, it's open to anybody who wants to come. Um, our topic is going to be about API representation in the media, and it's going to be from 4 to 5 p.m. next Wednesday. Um, and yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Any questions from members of the Horseshoe? Yes, Nick, and uh, please don't forget to sign your name in the organization. 
presentation. Thank you. Uh, seeing other, anyone else from the next official list would like to speak this time? Seeing none, we will move into uh, public forum. Anyone from the gallery would like to suggest the source sheet? want to talk about uh, you know, creative ways, uh, especially since you've independently come to this idea that you know, Senate meetings is something that a lot of us around this table definitely agree can use more exposure and more marketing. Yeah. Uh, I think that everyone here would love to welcome your input, and there's a lot of people around here who would like to work with you on that. Yes. Anyone else would like to address the speaker? <coughs> Seeing none, again, please write down your name and any organization that you're in. Other than that, thank you for your time. Anyone else would like to speak during public forum? Uh, I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Uh, seeing no one else in public forum, um, we will move on to the executive session. Um, again, this would mean that the Senate and us will go back to the conference room to discuss matters that we can't fully disclose this time. We moved to the session because this is a time-sensitive issue. Um, it, from our plenary report, it might take a couple, a good while, um, a solid 30 minutes at least. Uh, we do have a finance committee report on the agenda, which is something that I know a lot of people are very interested in, as it does deal with our funding as well as student fees. Um, that will be made public as soon as it's presented on the agenda later on tonight. Uh, thank you again for your patience. Excellent committee reports. Uh, finance committee report, Vice President Joffrey, you the floor. All right. Very good. Uh, right, do this. Yes, please. Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, we'll go with Senator Fielder. Do we need a projector? Uh, no, we're not. Do we need a projector? No, maybe. Because it's bothering you. Okay. Uh, to read these. No, I'm not. To reiterate, so point of personal privilege is if you, or something that's bothering you from like, checking your eyes, or being too loud, you set you up on this footage, and you can call at any time. Um, that's the thing. Hi right, everyone, well, I'm kind of sick, so I'm going to be early after my report, but anyway. Um, so Senator Allen and I have been working on making flyers for our college budget in the workshop. We thought it would be best to postpone the workshop by a week, and I'm sure that Senator Allen will elaborate more in his report. Okay, so about the budget efficiency and wasteful spending cut proposal. Many of us have promised to bring progress to the student body, including eliminating budgetary waste and increasing efficiency. Thus, as the Vice President of Finance, I set out to deliver on our promise by auditing the ACC budget to eliminate all unnecessary, unnecessary spending that has grown over the years and make more reflective and responsive to the current needs of the student body. 
As a practical uh, framework, my initial goal was to cut a total of $10,000 of wasteful expenses from this year's budget. However, after working with all of the officers, directors, pro temps, and pro staff, reviewing and comparing the last five years um, of the ACCR budget and looking at every single line item in the entire ACCR budget, including the overhead <laughs> and operating expenses for possible streamlining. I'm thrilled to announce that we have exceeded my original goal and have eliminated more than $15,000 of wasteful <coughs> spending. To uh, put in context, our ACCR budgetary contingency went up by nearly 50%. A larger contingency budget allows us to be more responsive to the current needs of the student and deliver on the promises we have, we have made to the student body. All of this is aligning our effort to be more efficient with student fees so we can actually fund services that directly impact and return value to a greater number of students. So the example of the cuts that I have, propo that I have proposed are cutting <coughs> meeting expense by half or more. Because my philosophy is that I would rather spend $10 buying students sweaters than uh, spend $10 buying myself food. Another thing that I am proposing is ACCR stop spending more than $1,000 on candy for ourselves. I, I can keep listing more luxurious, unnecessary, and wasteful things that ACCR has been spending their money on, but I will rest my case. We are here to serve students, not just ourselves. So the RGA initiative. Many of us promise our gift to the student body as part of our platform. I negotiate with numerous uh, vendors to achieve the cheapest price while also making sure they are nice quality sweaters and social free. I'm excited to, to say that I have uh, met this goal and still cut cost okay. uh, still cut cost by nearly uh, more than twenty one thousand dollars of the overall initiative from last year, while still managing to get the rate of under nine dollars per sweater. This actually makes our gear cheaper than the meals we buy for ourselves. ACs and the ACs of Polo we are wearing right now is three times more expensive than the sweaters we're going to buy. Um, this is also uh, $30 cheaper than the cheapest uh, campus hoodie, making it more accessible and affordable for students to express their uh, campus pride, especially for students who cannot afford to pay $40 for a hoodie. Uh, 5,761 students out of 6,456 students surveyed by ACCR last year supported the continuation of our year. The cost of our year is about 1.8% of the overall ACCR budget, while we are serving directly close to 23% of the student body this year. So, so shop free. If anyone in the horseshoe is concerned about whether or not the RGA is so shop free, we should be also concerned about whether or not the ACTR polos you are all wearing are so shop free, because they are from the same company. Just to avoid any, any, any misinformation, here is a certification. Here it is. Here it is. Okay? Certification of being so shop free. So, I hope that meat doesn't go around. <laughs> okay. Uh, so our ACC community opening up. We opened with 33636 uh, And then we added $15,000 and $46 from the budget back. And the RGA initiative will be costing $30,728.88 and for 3200 dollars our total ASU allocation was $30,728.28. I'm sorry, that's a mistake. $0.88. <laughs> 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 All right, our ASU community clothing balance was $17,953.12. Our organization and contingency opening balance was 9519 Hello got cable because of incomplete budget. NASA got cable because of incurred budget. Karate Club had to update their budget because they are already in their max limit and they have been approved. Student United Way were, uh, got allocated $100.
Highlander Staff Society by allocating 998. Namaste Medication Group were allocated 750. The Literacy Initiative uh, were allocated 750. The Rhythms and Brains were allocated 908. Uh, CASA were allocated 998. And One minute remains. Uh, the International Justice Mission were allocated 908. The Physician Assistant of Tomorrow were allocated 750. The Highland Glove were allocated 908. Total org allocation was $7,070. Org contingency closing round was $2,449. I motion to approve my <coughs> report. Second. There's a motion. There's a motion to approve the reports and the proposed budget changes by Vice President of Finance. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Senator LaShawn. Um, is there any discussion on this motion? Good job, Sean. Seeing <laughs> See no discussion, the motion will be approved as presented. Okay. Motion out. Yeah. Any objections? Objections, yeah. So what happens usually, and I, a lot of chairs don't do this, but they should, you call for a second, you see the motion, you ask for any objections, any discussion. If there's no discussions, no objections, then you can just say the motion for reason and ask. Yes, well assembly. In Robert's rules, silence usually means you agree. In Robert's rules only. Though. Only. Yeah. Only in Robert's Yeah, yeah. only in Robert's <laughs> rules. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, just for the purpose of clarity, Chester Perry, are there any discussion or objections or would you like a public vote? Because we can do that very easily. Seeing no objections or discussion, the motion passes and those changes are accepted. All right. Yes. <coughs> yes. 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 Moving on to LSC reports. Uh, 
Okay, so yeah, that's fine. So all we did, like I mentioned, with the RJ Ambassadorship Act was um, we basically moved those duties to the um, Vice President of Campus Internal Affairs. So the changes serve as an ex officio or appoint a designee necessary for ASPB and the RJ Executive Cabinet. Uh, so that handled that um, the Vice President of Internal Affairs serves as ASPB or um, ex officio. And also we made that um, for RJ as well, so they can either sit on it or you know, designate someone to go in their place. Um, and then if you want to scroll down, there's other changes that weren't actually related to that. Uh, all we did was just strike section Q from the bylaws because some previous folks didn't understand that you don't put things you want to work on for that year into bylaws. So we got rid of that and then just changed the numbering for Q to look like that. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to move to approve the changes to chapter 11 of the bylaws. Second. There's a motion to move chapter 11 of the bylaws. There's a second from Senator Winnie. Um, is there any discussion on this item? Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, the motion uh, passes unanimously. And thank you. That will conclude the LSD report. Thank you. We go on to center reports. Uh, Senator Sean. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so much hasn't changed from the last center report. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. The Hunt Scott event has officially been approved, uh, approved by Hunt Committee scheduling. So last, my, the last one I reported it was tentative, now it's official. Hunt Scott will take place November 4th, 2015, at the Hunt Plaza area, uh, from the hours of 11.45 a.m. until 2 o'clock p.m. Um, special thanks to Lori Sinclair for all her uh, work in helping me get in contact with the right people. Uh, Senator Catherine Tatley and uh, BPCIA Michael Irvin for all their uh, idea contributions and whatnot. Uh, <coughs> I'll, I'm sorry. <coughs> I will need a great deal of Senator involvement and help on this day and planning and logistics. So if any of you are interested, I'd greatly appreciate it. It will take a lot of manpower to help organize, or I'm sorry, it will take a lot of people power to um, help organize uh, students and whatnot in the line. Um, secondly, as you all saw at the last Senate meeting, uh, I gave a copy of the proposal to Joe Barada. Uh, after the, the meeting, Nancy emailed me, and I emailed that attachment to both her and Joe. Um, and since then, I've been in contact with a few people from Student Life uh, and other other departments. <coughs> Tina Aung from the Middle Eastern Student Association has contacted me about the Embracing Our Culture Leadership Conference. Um, so I will most likely try to pursue this and implement it via the Diversity Council. And um, yeah, that's it. I'll let you know the progress in between this week and um, the next. The same thing you want to report. Sorry, I have some like drinks going on. So that concludes our report. Thank you. So, I'm going to go. So, just to kind of recap a little bit about last week uh, in regards to the ORC clusters, Catherine Tatley, uh, Senator Catherine Tatley, recently sent another email to our uh, cluster org, which is academic and professional and artist group as well. A few of them have responded, but not a large, substantial amount. Um, and it's just a matter of collecting all the information and for us to schedule uh, when to actually go into their meetings. Um, I've been uh, in contact with Jorge, the representative from Teach for America, to see if he can uh, get in contact with a couple of other organizations, as well as one of the organizations I'm currently in, so that he can speak to uh, his organization to, uh, to us, basically. In regards to the hand dryers, I haven't made any substantial um, gains in terms of the research, but I am still pursuing them. I believe that they can help UCR update the second degree direction. And lastly, um, I contacted a, a, man, a guy named Jack Jersey, can't say his last name. He is a representative from an organization called Root, and they are a relatively new organization that focuses on kind of a different style of how tutoring works. Um, to kind of give an overview, it is kind of like the Uber of tutoring, where students can basically see, oh, the person tutors here, and if they're available, and they can set up a meeting with them to be tutored in that particular subject. Um, it's a very raw idea. At this point, I did contact him uh, through email and through uh, phone to get more information, but if there are any other senators out there who are interested in this uh, project of expanding UCR's tutoring options, uh, please let me know. And I'm also going to be working with the Academic Resource Center to make sure I don't sell any feet. I know that's access. I also am an employee there. So, you know, just 
figuring things out step by step and taking it slowly. Uh, but that concludes my report. Uh, Senator Al Shams, do you have a report? I did. Would you like to say more than my report? Yeah, can you say it for announcements? Yeah, of course. Cool. Senator Taylor? <coughs> All right. So for the last uh, two weeks, uh, I began helping personnel director Emily Yang on interviewing people for the campus community at large in order to help their place on committees. Um, I can't thank Melissa for helping me out on Monday with that. Um, additionally, uh, I began serving as the execution of RHA, and from their suggestion I submitted to LRC two bylaw adjustments. One is was the striking of Chapter 30, and the other was the changes to the vice president of campus internal trade bylaws. And thankfully, both were passed, so I can go report that next week. Um, and then I've also, in order, and for food security, uh, UC Irvine came to our campus on Saturday, and I was attending the meeting with them. And I lose my work. Thank you. Senator? All right, so um, like Shafi kind of touched up on it. Uh, we have the college budgeting uh, sponsored by HCCR, which is November 2nd at the Penn of the Barricade from 7.30 to 9.30. Uh, there's going to be like a uh, light refreshments and uh, like snacks provided. So like if any of y'all are on like finance committee or just want to come help out, that would be greatly appreciated. We, 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 we push it back so we can market it better because we feel like one week we too, uh, too rest. So like this next two weeks we're going to try to market it as much as we can. Uh, like for you all that are involved in like RHA, that would be great to uh, have like the resident residents come out. Like I'm gonna ask like a lot of freshmen I know to come out, uh, just help promote it. And yeah, I just want to uh, thank Shafi and uh, Connie Fan from Marketing Committee helping out. So yeah, that concludes our report. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Senator? Um, I'm really looking forward. Just been working with Senator Melissa and our rest of the for art closet. Uh, two weeks, so uh, two weekends ago, I attended the Common Ground Retreat as a facilitator, and we had a great conversation about um, the Diversity Council and what the student body wanted from it. Uh, so we talked about having solidarity, standing in solidarity with social justice matters in our ethnic and gender centers. Uh, we also talked about challenging the clickiness of those centers as well, and creating that bridge between ASUCR and Costa Mall and the other centers too. Um, we have the full list of representatives uh, for the council, and the meetings will start Friday at 2 p.m. at the ACCR conference room. And I'm very excited for that. Um, another thing, uh, my personal project is the Center's One Lines Way, tentatively titled Our Stars. Um, it is a showcase of talent of not only the student body at the, uh, in the Highlander community, but also staff and faculty is welcome to show off their talents as well. Uh, tentative location is the Starbucks, the new Starbucks location in uh, Glenmore 2. Uh, I'm meeting with the manager Mary there, and we're going to talk about um, logistics and things like that. If any of the senators or any of the executive cabinet directors are here, welcome to help me out with this project. You can use the help. Thank you. That is my report. Senator Marcus? Hello, I will be reporting on our closet committee. So our closet committee met on October 15th and we discussed what we will be needing in storage at the Bears Den. And right now we are working on finding and buying some racks and cubbies to store the clothing that we have down there right now and clothing that we will be getting in the future. Also, the committee went ahead and filled in the positions for our closet. <coughs> so um, it was decided and voted on that I will be chairing our closet for the 2015-2016 school year. Senator, Ta Senator Tatley will be vice chair of the committee, and Senator Chan will be the outreach coordinator. Um, as for events, the committee decided to do a donation drive during week eight of fall quarter, and we will be taking out the donation boxes on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of that week by the bell tower. Um, more information is to come um, during the next weeks. And we also decided on um, having an undie run, uh, spring quarter, so that's another thing. And each senator picked up an assignment for our closet, so they will be reporting on that, or if not, we will have more information in later weeks. And also, um, I have a report on the health center. So I met um, a couple of senators, and I met with Shaq, of, I think two weeks ago, and I expressed my concern about the student health center website being outdated. I went ahead and looked at different student health 
um, websites for multiple UC campuses and took notice that our website isn't as updated on information um, uh, as for the services we offer on campus and off campus. Um, I believe we should put more information as to what urgent cares and what hospital students are able to go to after hours and also on weekends, uh, among other things. Um, the website should be able to have some links and information on insurance so students know what insurance is offered and what services um, are provided through the insurance. Um, there was some talk about maybe even doing some blogs or having information and events to promote things that are going on in the health center. And I'm still waiting on hearing back from the Assistant Vice Chancellor of Student Health and Wellness. So, yeah, that's my report. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so we met with um, UCI's food pantry here, as Casey mentioned, on Saturday to continue our joint efforts <coughs> for coordinating. Um, their food pantry is open, so we talked about their first couple of weeks since they opened uh, and sustainable funding sources looking forward. Uh, so, so again, you have a referendum or how we want to do that. Um, what's the GF? Yeah, what's the funds from you? Yeah, what's the GFI funds from you? How we're to figure out how we're going to fund the food pantry moving forward. Uh, so we'll be meeting again with Irvine sometime before Thanksgiving, and also something that came out of that: um, the California High Education Food Summit. The second one will be taking place at UCI in January. So um, I'll be helping them plan with that once they get settled. So definitely, I'll keep you all updated as that moves forward. Um, I presented that investment bill. Is I was hoping to present next week, but I got to the LRC today. We still have to work out some of the language, so that will be coming up soon. Um, also, after LRC today was a statement um, regarding the uh, statement of uh, statement of principles against intolerance of the UCs. Um, talk about. So, if you don't all know, uh, actually this Monday there's going to be a working group on the on the statement meeting. Uh, myself, I'm not looking at any what's going. Yeah, and hospital will be in attendance as well. So yeah, some members of the office as well as other members of the general community will be going to UCLA to speak in the working group on the last statement of intolerance. And there will be having a resolution next Wednesday um, for them to be set it, so that will be coming up. Um, introduce with first year fellows have started, now that we have our chairperson, um, that will be moving forward. I don't know when they're going to be selected, but once they are, I hope to move forward with the campus wide resolution workshops that I mentioned before. So um, once the first year uh, the fellows are selected, that's something I'd really like them to work on is having this campus wide resolution workshop. So once they're picked, I can start uh, developing more programming for that. Um, and lastly, we're, um, the two bylaws, uh, the two bylaws that were removed and um, the bylaw changes. I worked with um, Senator Creo, Gilhart, and Tatley, and we also solicited comments from the RT Executive President on the bylaws. It was with uh, some of her recommendation on working together. Um, and we decided to strike the two to the internal bylaws. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, Senator?
Um, Thyses slash pilotic slash NPC H, the only have in our center, it's just a bit more acute, so it's kind of like some ones that we did on Friday and Tuesday, which is the most direct center. One minute remaining. So um, I'm working on getting lockers, so I heard back to my contact in Lothian. Um, the lockers are old, now I'm just waiting to hear if it's a health and safety concern. Um, to my understanding, the Hub Board of Governors is set now, and uh, I'll be emailing them soon. Um, I've also been working with Vice President of Internal Affairs, Michael, for, <coughs> um, uh, helping him with the Food Truck Festival. Oh, sorry, just vice president. Oh, no, sorry, just, you're fine. Under um, the Food Truck Festival, helping them out with those sort of things, um, gathering volunteers and guiding them, I suppose. I also went to the, uh, um, the UCI meeting that happened in the conference room this past Saturday. Also, um, since people came to uh, the ASUCR meetings like last, Week, and they expressed their um, want for help with the ghost walk sort of thing. Um, I've gathered myself and um, a couple of my friends to go to the ghost walk and volunteer for that. Um, as well as I went to an APSP youth day and just expressed to high school students the importance of the ACCR. And yeah, that concludes our report. Thank you, Sandra. Hi, okay. Um, so <laughs> thank you to everyone who came out to meet the Senate. It was really fun. Just throwing that out there. Um, okay, so I am working on our country with the Vice President of Campus Internal Affairs, Michael Urban. Um, we are looking for volunteers to help with shopping, loading, and unloading on October 23rd. Information was sent out in an email earlier this week if you need to inquire about that. We have a soft opening date for November 3rd. We are also looking for useful bags that we can use to back the food and for people to take home when they come visit the art pantry. If you have any reusable bags, please feel free to bring and donate them um, to the art pantry. You can drop them off at the well or the ASUCR front desk. Um, our pantry is also looking for two student managers and you can find more information about this and apply on Scotland. <coughs> I've also been working on an art closet these past couple weeks. I currently serve as the outreach coordinator. I'm working on marketing for this quarter's art closet events with the help of marketing director Kat Chang. Uh, marketing will be primarily focused on our donation week, which as mentioned before, will be on in week eight. I am going to reach out to Oris to collaborate on a fashion show planned for winter quarter. I've already contacted a specific org class in fashion as they are interested in working with us on that. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Um, so, as in my last report, where I was going to be working on Chat's newsletter, I have gathered a team of consisting of Senator Casey and Senator Allen. And so, we'll be personally overseeing this. And I sent out emails to the department heads class, <laughs> and I'm scheduling a meeting with the dean. I believe her name is uh, Benyon Maros to uh, further progress along this. But primarily this goal is just to, uh, as I said, uh, constant newsletter to update people about what's going on. So we shall be hearing back these emails and I'll report back from the meeting with the center. Additionally, I'm, I'm meeting with uh, President of IMC Waiters. Uh, he expressed recent concern about a growing problem in the Greek community, which is uh, drug driving. And uh, so, in collaboration with ACCR, IFC, and NPC, uh, we want to make a drunk driving initiative campaign. And we, uh, we're going to be in contact with the well, as well as uh, having a drunk driving module, and just different resources that we can uh, provide to the student body to show the dangers of it, and to really give the students a feel for how big of a drag can be to our student body, and to create overall awareness for this well. And so we'll be working on that. You know, you know. Senator? Okay, so I'm pleased to announce that I'm going to be the new mental health coordinator campaign for UCSA. Um, as I did attend uh, the Congress meeting that happened this past year, um, I also sit on the External Affairs uh, Executive Committee as well. 
Um, so basically, with that being said, is that um, there was a meeting earlier this week where um, the VP of External Affairs did attend um, to talk about some different issues and concerns that we have, we're having. Um, so basically, what we're going to try to do is making sure that uh, basically the counselors will have oversight and training um, regarding to uh, specific communities that some of the students identify as being part of as well, too. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone that attended the Mayor's Day Out. It was really nice to see all the senators as well as executive um, cabinet who attended. So to go further along with that, I'm working with Angel Rodriguez who works externally in the Chancellor's Office and we would like to create a training and I've discussed it with our EVP as well as our um, VP of External Affairs to have a training for the senators and the students as well to be able to communicate effectively with government officials and what that entails and how to further develop that connection. And that will allow the senators to really lobby for projects and funding, of course, which is why we want to build a connection with government officials from that. Uh, finally, I wanted to talk about uh, the health center meeting that we had two weeks ago. And this consisted of the health center, the counseling center, uh, as well as the administration and directors from both the health center and the counseling center. So basically they started off by telling us how the office of the president are, is reinvestigating all the health centers across the UCs and the counseling offices as well. And they decided to move forward, especially with UCR's counseling center and health center on a different organizational model, which consists of two separate directors, which they already had. And they want to relook, they want to collaborate more because uh, before, I guess, there was a distinction between the counseling center as well as the health center, and now they want to really work together effectively and collaborate on all the different services that they have, as well as expanding their administration. Now, um, there needs to be a lot of admin support, which is why administration is definitely stepping in in a lot of these different issues, and as well as new policy changes. Uh, we also talked about the loss of revenue, which occurred in the health center, and to just talk quickly and briefly about that, it was because UCR used to self-manage their dental and optometry, but now we have decided to look for a business elsewhere, which is why you have Aetna Dental and Aetna for your uh, optometry, and the, la the lack of self-management, and for them to lead this self-management lost a lot of funds, which is why they lost a lot of funding for any of their resources due to that. So we're going to come up with ways and we're going to be sitting on Shack as well to further discuss UC SHIP and the premiums that are offered and to sort of see where students want their premiums to be at. And finally, we talked about the student survey and the assessment. And there is basically a patient survey because of the UPOP limitation. They can only hand out, I think it was 100 or 200 surveys, so you can't actually contact every single patient after they have a service there. So that was something interesting that we found out. So we will be educating students more about the insurance changes, and then we will also be having a follow-up meeting with the Chancellor as well as Susan Allen Ortega, the Assistant Vice Chancellor, to further discuss issues that are occurring, whether they're internal or fiscal as well. And that will conclude my report. Perfect time, um, Lastly, um, Senator Taylor emailed the report to me and asked me to read it to you all, and I will make this brief. Um, hi all, since my last Senate report, Senator Daly, I've continued to work on the projects that I talked about, such as the phone conferencing device and the R Closet Committee. <coughs> with a phone conferencing device, I'm waiting for opening to meet with the Finance Committee. R Closet has met twice now. We've divided up tasks regarding some of the logistics that we want to implement this year, and we'll be going over the bylaws of the committee again this coming week. I've also joined Senator Dalshawn Thurston's project, Hug Scotty, and I'm very excited to see how this project in simplifying pride will turn out. For my committees, I'm still sitting on the ASCC Sexual Harassment and Sexual Violence Prevention Committee, as well as the R Plaza Committee. The ASCC Sexual Harassment and Sexual Violence Prevention Committee will be meeting up this week or next. As for my third committee, I've been transferred to the SHAC Student Housing Advisory Committee, and we will begin meeting starting winter quarter. More to come. I'm starting to work on a project with Senator Nick Creo regarding workshop slash practice spaces for more physically active organizations on campus. If you have any more questions about projects that I'm working on, you're more than welcome to stop by my office hours on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. or contact me via email at ktad001 at ucr.edu. Uh, that concludes the report. Lastly, on this item, uh, my, or the Senate Secretary has informed me that we are still missing return reports from Senator Jackson.
Senator Zuna and Senator Lopez, and Vice President Correa. So please send those in as soon as possible for the purpose of minutes and just for due notice. Uh, we have to public comments. Any members of the public who speak to that who wish to speak on any members of this meeting? Yes, Senator. Do I have to go step down from the podium? Do you want to speak on public comment as um, a member of the public? No, I just want to do a record question. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Uh, members of the public, anything else said or talked about out of this meeting today? Hello, my name is Cameron Young. I'm the video editor with the Highlanders, but uh, right now I'm not with the, I'm not currently not with the Highlanders. I'm not speaking on behalf of the Highlanders. <laughs> but um, today I'm speaking on behalf of a student. Her name is Yesenia Santiago. And she wrote a letter, kind of a thank you comment to the uh, Our Gear Initiative. So uh, here's a letter, and I'm just going to read it right now. Hello, I'm Yesenia. I'm an undocumented student from Pomona, California. I'm a full-time student, but I also have, a, have to work full-time too just to get by. Um, she couldn't get anyone to cover a shift today. That's why I'm covering it right now. Um, not because I wanted to, but because I have to. I don't have the luxury, like most students, I get help from financial aid, but that only pays for the basic necessities. While I do not have school pride, I can't afford to share the experience. Well, while I do have school pride, I can't afford to share the experience like my more like my more affluent affluent peers. I can't afford to pay forty to fifty dollars for a UCR hoodie from the bookstore to show my school spirit and be a part of the UCR family. So thank you for keeping your promise because I do not I, I do think it's important for you guys to uh, fight for important issues like tuition hikes and gender studies. But it's also very important to try to help our college experiences better, especially for those of us who can't afford to do it ourselves. I talk to a lot of students who feel the same way, but many students don't have the time or voices, or our voices get drowned out by the few who are loud and aggressive. So I decided to stand up for the silent majority today and to speak to you today. We pay so much in fees. It's good to finally actually get something back for it. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for finally giving something back directly to the regular students like me. And I hope you all support this initiative. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your testimony as well as the letter you read. So please, yeah, bear regards. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other members of the audience want to speak on public comment on anything that transpired at this meeting? Yes. Okay. Um, I listened to Shalvin's finance report, and I didn't hear it in there, and I'm not sure if a lot of you know, they were trying to cut front office hours, as well as not paying the $1 raise to those who currently already make over minimum wage. I'm not sure if that was taken out. I know we made a separate agreement with Shafi due to us not agreeing with it, and I just let everyone know that like there will be office changes, so if you guys feel that like students aren't being taken care of to the best of their ability, it is something that is out of our hands due to Shafi's budget cuts. Our hours are cut during finals week, so when students come in to turn things in, we may not always be there. And that is going to be left to like Ames or whoever's up at the front to take care of it at that time. I don't know if Shawnee purposely like didn't bring it up or anything, but if it's in the budget and it wasn't, I, I sat here and was like, he didn't mention staffing cuts or anything like that. Yes, uh, President Brown? Can I get a hand up? Did the senator receive the finance report? And was I the finance report? I thought he was going to say no. It wasn't um, explicitly stated exactly the reports that we have here of what those changes were going to be, just that there was cuts. There were cuts. Yes, yeah, yeah, there were cuts. cuts. Okay. It did. I apologize. I don't want to see these reports. Someone else would like to yeah, um, I don't yeah, I don't think it's like anywhere like specifically demarcated in there. I think it was included in the overall cuts. Um but Andrea, I know you were there yesterday. I don't know if you wanted to speak on it or if anything yeah. had changed. Just so you were actually in the meeting and I don't want to speak on behalf yeah. of the staff. Do I go up? Please. Hello, for those who don't know me, I'm Andrea, I also work at the front desk. Um, so in regards to yesterday's meeting with Shopee, so um, on Monday we had found out that our hours are going to be cut. So um, we were able to work out some compromises so that way there wouldn't be no coverage during finals week. However, there is going to be limited 
coverage and during breaks the front office won't be working we were able to come to an agreement in regards to um, honoring uh, our merit increases that we've earned over our span of you know two to three years for um, some of the few that have been working there for that long such as myself who have been here since November 2012 but yeah just in case you all weren't aware of the finance cuts there are going to be cuts to the front office hours so that will be affecting finals week for sure and then we won't be working any breaks so thank you all um, so yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. the, the hours um, in the office will change from 9 to 4 instead of 8 to 5 during finals week, and the front desk staff will be there from 10 to 2. Um, so there's, um, I believe that's three hours that Amy will be covering um, for the front desk in their place, just similarly to how the summer was spent. Any other questions or comments to? 10 to 2, 9 to 4. The office itself will be open 9 to 4 instead of 8 to 5, and then the front office staff. Uh, uh, yeah. Senator, yeah. okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Order, please, thank you. Uh, Senator Jackson. I don't know if this just has to do with the question then, but I guess during finals week when they're not actually there during that first hour of business of operations, are we going to make sure that we don't like allow people to schedule things during, schedule things during that one hour? Or like how it's going to be? going to come to the front and take care of that. Uh, yes. Um, I'm here to respond to the meeting and I'm sure I'm going to respond to um, so Amy will cover about one hour between nine and ten. That um, the front desk staff won't be there, but there's no Senate meeting. There's usually no committee meetings. There's no finance hearing. So the duties are different in finals week than they are in like week ten or like right now. Okay. And the question is, Senator David. Um, is there something specific you wanted to do, or is it just to be more um, mindful of the situation? I think it's just for me mindful. We weren't really told about the situation. It was brought to our attention in a way that like, it should have been done in a better manner than just like us signing the event after you guys approved it. And it's obvious that like, they, they told you guys, oh, there's going to be changes, so they didn't explain what those changes meant. But like, for you guys, when people come to your office hours, there's not going to be one of us there. Like, when people come to turn the requisitions because receipts do have an expiry date with us, there's not going to be anyone there. So just like making you guys aware that like, the little things that we do take care of aren't going to get done anymore, and like Amy's already has a heavy workload, so that burden is now going to fall to her, so the things aren't going to get done in like the manner that you guys are used to. Thank you. Uh, I said that. So it was like more of a heads up for like notifying us of the situation. Um, and then I was going to ask, uh, or I used to clarify more on why everything was in the report. Um, to my understanding, Shopee, I'm not sure if it's any, uh, I got a line item from Shopee for 30. Yeah, in the email, um, there's a line item budget. And so usually during the meeting, um, they don't go through every single line item. It's every center's responsibility to read through all the items and go through the I'm not sure why they touched on me in this report, but it was for sure included in um, the documents that were given to the Senate beforehand. And then so we can do the work with the understanding that everybody's already like, informed about all aspects of what was being done and stuff like that. Thank you. Uh, other questions? <laughs> One minute, everybody.
are taking for like our group. So that wait. I'm sorry, you said the term. I, I, it's called Alpha something. Halo? Oh. Focusing on the front and focusing on the Yeah. Uh, so thank you. That's fun. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's <laughs> No, sorry, yes, 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 yes. 